Let's stick in the featherweight division and let's talk to one of the top contenders in said division. Chad Mendez joins us on the phone right now. Chad, how are you? I'm good. Good to talk to you, Arrow. How you been, man? Yes, it has been a while. Thank you very much for, for joining us today. Um, and, 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 you know, it's interesting. You know, obviously we saw you in action in December. Um, you've remained relatively quiet since then. Of course, it was not, you know, uh, um, it, things didn't go the way you planned, obviously. But any particular reason why you took a step back? Did you just feel like it was the right thing to do at this juncture? Why did you do it? Yeah, I just felt like it was. Plus, uh, you know, I just started a new business, Fins and Feathers. It's a... Uh, like a celebrity guide service. Oh. I've been putting a lot of time and energy and effort into that as well. So, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people don't know, but, you know, we're done fighting. We don't get retirement. So <laughs> you stop fighting, you stop making money. So I'm trying to get something going to where after I'm done fighting, I can continue to make money and, and survive and live off doing something I absolutely love to do. So me and uh, a few of my good buddies all went in and started this business. So, um, I mean, that's what I've been putting a lot of time into after that fight um you know obviously the fight like you said just didn't go my way it was pretty damn bummed honestly uh you know i know i'm better than that you know i know i can get in there and, and compete with a guy like frankie um in my mind i think i can beat him as well so it's just going out there and, and getting caught like that early in the fight just freaking sucks dude okay back to the business for a second did you say a celebrity guide business yeah so what does that mean i'll just give you a quick rundown yeah so, so basically, what we have like a a list of hunts, so clients can choose one of the the hunting or fishing trips that we provide. Um, we have stuff all over the place: New Zealand, Alberta, Canada, a lot of stuff here locally, Northern California, um, uh, Utah. So we have stuff all over the place. They get to choose which one they want to go on, and then we have a, a list of like a celebrity pro staff list. There's about ten, or about fifteen different uh, professional athletes, actors. Um, the client gets to choose which hunt, which which celebrity they want to go on that trip with them, and we line it up and make it happen. And then they have uh, so basically what we do is subcontract out professional guides that already have businesses up and running, they have you know reputable business. So we uh, team up with those guys, and the celebrity and the client gets to go uh, hunt or fish with them on their boat or their ranch. So it's something that's unique and different. No one's really doing that in the industry yet, and. Like I said, I'm a huge outdoorsman. I, I love being in the woods. I love fishing. I love hunting. I mean, we've talked about this on past shows before. So, um, you know, it's what I love. It's who I am. So being able to come up with some kind of way to provide that service to people that are interested in it, being able to hunt fish, being out in the outdoors and make a living is, is uh, something I want to do. So what kind of celebrities are we talking about? We have a lot of UFC people. We have... Uh, like I said, some actors. We have pro uh, baseball players, basketball players, oh. um, um, professional shooters, um, PBR writers. And we just got a, a crazy mix of all kinds of different people. How much does something so, like this cost? You know, there's different prices for each hunt. Um, like our signature package is probably our most popular. And basically what it is, it's a two-day trip. So the first day, it's like a full-day planted pheasant hunt here um, lo locally in Sacramento. Um, then the next day we're on the river fishing with one of our pro guides, uh, for like striped bass, salmon, sturgeon, whatever's running at that time with the celebrity of their choice. And that's a thousand dollars for the two day trip. And that's lodging included. Sorry, 1200 with lodging included. Okay. And so, so that's kind of the pricing scale on that. But, you know, we have wild pig hunts. We have, uh, just straight fishing trips on the Sac river. Um, you know, like I said, mule deer hunts, antelope, um, New Zealand Red Stag. We have stuff all over the place. I love that you're doing this because, A, you're passionate about it, but also, you know, you said something interesting there about when you retire, there's no, you know, retirement plan or anything mm -hmm. like that. Is this something that you've started to think about more? Like, all right, you know, because I feel like fighters, when they're coming up, they're young, all you're thinking about is, you know, the belt or making it to the big time, the money and all that. But there comes a time, at least for the smart ones, where you start to think, okay, all right, at some point this is going to mm -hmm. end. It happens to all of us. What am I going to do afterwards? Is this a new thing that you've been feeling or have you been feeling this way a long time that you need to set up for the future? No, I mean, this is something I've always thought about from day one with the fighting career. I mean, I went to college. I wrestled in college. I graduated with a kinesiology degree. You know, fighting wasn't always what I wanted to do. I actually had no idea. You know, when I started doing it, you know, I told myself, look, I'm going to try this. If I'm good at it, I'll stick with it and, uh, you know, make as much possible money as I can, uh, you know, and then find some kind of, I mean, obviously we can't do this forever. This is a brutal sport, dude. This is, you know, you see guys that fight 
you know, into their 40s, 50s. They, they can't talk when they're 60, 70 years old. And, you know, it's, it can be brutal. And so for me, the thought was, I'm going to get in. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put my heart and soul into it. Um, you know, train as hard as I possibly can, do as, poss- as well as I possibly can, and uh, then figure out a way to somehow use that to make a living after the sport. You know, and so that was from day one. And, you know, obviously I'm 30 now, almost 31 now. Um, you know, the ultimate goal for me was to fight around 35, 36 years old and just kind of see what my body's feeling like at that point and uh, just kind of go from there and, and, and evaluate it. But, um, you know, in the meantime, I wanted to start something. This is something we've thought of for a while, me and some of my close buddies. So, um, you know, we've put, in some t- put some time into it. Uh, one of my other buddies is a UPS driver, and he's about three years from retiring as well. So oh. he's getting close to it. And, um, you know, so he wanted to get it up and running and see if we can start booking some hunts to kind of see. Because, like I said, it's new in the industry. Nobody's really doing it. So we had no idea how people were going to react to it, if it was going to take off or not. So we've actually been getting quite a few people booking, which is very exciting. Uh, you know, 2016 so far, we have about 15 people that have booked different trips so uh it's looking good man i'm excited how many more years do you want to fight for like i said i'm the goal was probably about 35 36 but okay i mean if i fight another two years and my body's just like you're done then i'm listening to it man it's just, i don't have the ego i don't have I'm, I'm able to put the pride aside you know if my body doesn't want it you know i want to have a family i want to be able to spend time with my family when i'm older uh and not be in a wheelchair so uh, you know, I, I'm the type of guy that's going to listen to my body. You know, I still want to make a run for that title. I'm not done yet. You know, this is this is not the end of me. Um, I just have to reevaluate, you know, figure out what I'm going to do and get back after it. Have you watched the Edgar fight? I have. What, what, what went wrong? Sorry, what was that? You're talking to me? What would you say? Oh, I said, what, what went say? wrong in your opinion? I mean, I just got caught. You know, I... I so I, I kept my feet planted when I probably shouldn't have. You know, that's something we talked about before. That was probably the major mistake, and I dropped my hand and caught me. Um, I mean, it happens in the sport, man. Those forums clubs are very unforgiving, and, uh, you know, we saw with all those. It can happen to anybody anytime. It's just frustrating, but that's honestly what makes the sport so competitive and, and, you know, a sport that so many people want to watch because you just never really know. Obviously, it was just, it was less than two months ago. Do you feel like you're over it? Do you feel like you're still harping on it every day? Like, how are you dealing with the loss now? Man, I'll never get over that. I never get over any loss, really. I mean, that's something that sticks with you forever. Uh, you know, I think it's the way you deal with it is, is what makes you who you are. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to think about that every time I train now. You know, I'm thinking about it. I'm, I'm, I saw the mistakes. I want to focus on that and, and learn from it and get better. But, um, you know, like I said, it's part of the sport. It's part of any sport. There's winning, there's losing, there's ups and downs. Uh, it's just how you deal with it. It's what makes you who you are. So for me, like I said, I'm going to learn from it. i, I got to just put it behind me. You know, it's not something I'm ever going to forget, but right now I'll put it behind me and, and get back in there and kill it. Is it possible, you know, the the perhaps shocking thing about that fight was that it was um, a first-round knockout for Edgar, not someone who has been known for his power in hindsight, do you feel like you underestimated his power? You didn't see it coming? No, not at all. I mean, I don't know if you saw the fire. I mean, I got connected in the nose. Like, yeah. It was it was not like any crazy solid punch. You know, I just, there was something that just wasn't right. You know, whether I, you know, that was the first fight I fought without using an IV. You know, maybe the, the hydration process wasn't right. Um, you know, maybe I took a little bit too much damage to that training camp than I should have or uh, you know, a little bit too much, too late. But I just feel like I've been hit harder than that by so many other people and not been out. You know what I mean? Like that was a flash that just grazed my nose, really. And that's that's another thing I feel it's so frustrating for me. Is like I know I'm better than that. You know, I know. You know, normally that doesn't do that to me, and it just sucks. But there's nothing you can do about it. Um, when you were talking about the training camp, um, are you referring like do you think you came back too soon after the Connor fight? I mean, I don't think so. I mean, the thing is, Connor, I didn't take, like, a ton of damage in that fight. He caught me with one punch that, that flashed me. It didn't even knock me out cold or anything. You know, it's like you, that happens in, in practice your training camps multiple times uh, throughout a camp. So, 
I don't think that was, you know, anything that had anything to do with it. But, uh, you know, you never know. I mean, you do start getting flashed one right after another, and it starts happening easier and easier. So, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's a possibility, but I don't think that's what it was. And how about, I mean, no secret, it seems like it's a state of transition at Alpha Male these days. How much of a factor is that where, you know, there's a little bit of drama, some coaching changes, things like that? Is any of that affecting you negatively? I mean, obviously, it's something that sucks to deal with. I mean, this is an issue we've been dealing with for a little bit now. Um, you know, it's just, it's tough being a part of it. But, uh, you know, the sport is still relatively a new sport. I mean, we still have just a lot to deal with as far as coaching goes i mean a lot of the coaches that are solid that have fought in the ufc or you know have a great system already have a team you know what i mean so it's, it's tough for us in this position trying to find that perfect fit you know someone that's done it someone that's uh you know reputable someone that's not absolutely insane you know it's there's just a lot of factors that go into it uh, as of right now we have justin buckles who's always been an amazing coach uh, and cornerman, he's always been the type of guy that I loved having in my corner. I mean, you you guys have seen I've had him in my corner uh, a lot of the times. He's he's a brainiac in there. So, I mean, that's that's awesome. But we just locked that up. You know, going through this last fight camp, we didn't have a coach really that was ours. We had a couple people coming in and, uh, you know, just people in and out of the gym all the time trying to coach us. And it's like, I don't even know who you are. I don't. You know, I have no, you know, respect as far as that goes as being my mentor. So it's just, it's difficult, man. I mean, this is something we're going to work on. We're going to figure it out. You know, I, I have faith in Faber and, and these guys as to what's going to happen for the team. But um, as of right now, I'm focused on, you know, my fins and feathers venture. Um, I'm going to just keep training, working on my mistakes that I've made in past fights and, and getting better by by him and uh you know just keep moving forward um obviously we just saw benavidez uh pick up a big win this weekend seems like he's been doing some training with bang again are you uh are you considering that as well i mean that's uh, i'm not considering it no but i don't have anything against these guys that want to go over there and train i mean you know there's a lot of negativity and, and stuff being said back and forth and people getting frustrated and it's like everyone's a grown ass adult. Like people can make their own decisions and do what they want. You know, I know what I need to do and I know what I'm going to do. And, uh, you know, that's, that's really all that matters in my life right now. So why, because you had success with bang, why won't you consider it? I just feel like there's just too much drama between everything. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't have anything against bang. Like there's nothing in my mind that makes me hate the guy or anything like that. I just feel like with him favor, the whole drama thing, it's just, it's not worth me getting in the middle of it. Is it possible that you're just loyal towards Faber? He's the guy who brought you in. Like, if you had to choose at the end of the day, that's who you're going to side with. I mean, yeah. I mean, I have loyalty. I I love Faber, but like I said, if these guys feel like this is what it takes for them to get better. Like, I don't feel like it's a loyalty thing. I mean, that's them trying to better their lives. Like, that's what they feel like they need. You mm -hmm. know, it just it sucks like being in the middle of it. You know what I mean? But I mean, there's nothing that I hold against any of those guys. I don't hold anything against Bang. Uh, you know, I am loyal to Faber. I love Faber like my brother, you know, but uh, I just basically want to stay away from that whole drama set. Is that hard because you are one of the faces of the team and it just it's like this black oh, yeah. cloud that continues to trail you guys? Is it hard to get away from that? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's it's difficult. And like I said, it's something that it stress it's stressful. It stresses me out. I don't like being a part of it. Like, I love doing this as a sport. You know, I, I got into this because I wanted to compete. And when all this stuff gets thrown into it, it doesn't, it's not fun for me. And so, you know, it's something that I just don't want to be a part of. Hmm. Um, do you talk to the, you know, I have to admit, I said this last week, one of my least favorite stories in MMA right now is this sort of passive aggressiveness with the tweets and the muscle farm stuff and like the, they throw out one message yeah. and then the other guys it's just like why I don't know why it can't just be a clean break or guys can't just yeah. do, you, do you agree with what I'm saying either. there? Yeah no I, I completely agree and that's one of the things that stresses me out because some, you know one group does something and then the other person's pissed off and uh, then these people are pissed and then these people are pissed and it's like 
I have to hear both sides. And it's like, dude, you guys are both doing this to each other. Like, just end it. It's fine. Like, go on with our lives. Like, we don't have to hate each other. We can all still be friends. Like, I just don't want to be a part of this. Did you tell maybe, like, the favorite, like, maybe we should stop talking? Like, is there, like, a, a message out that no one's... I know I'm talking to you about it right now, but this is kind of first. Yeah. Uh, do you guys just want to stop, you know, feeding... It? Maybe between those two guys, it's hard to control Bang, but on Faber's yeah. side? Yeah, I mean, both, both sides. I mean, I could talk to both sides, and, I mean, that's definitely something that has to be done. But at the same time, like, I still want to be friends with everybody. It's like yeah. I've been with all these guys as teammates for the entire career that I've been in MMA. And it's like, I don't want to just not talk to them. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I, like he is one of our pro staff members. So is Faber. Like these guys can go on trips with clients and it's like, I don't want there to be like all kinds of hate between the two. And you know what I mean? Like it's just, it's frustrating trying to do things in normal life with all this drama going on. And it's like, it sucks because, you know, all the media wants to talk about it because it's something that's interesting and different. And so that obviously doesn't help because now we get a lot of attention drawn on it. So then everyone keeps talking about it. And it's just a vicious circle. Um, so as you said earlier, is Buckles the new head coach? Is that official? Yeah, Buckles at Team Alpha Mel is right now. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, him and Chris Holdsworth, yes. Yeah. So, Chris, is Chris done fighting or is he just kind of doing both until he can... Uh... Uh, get clear what, I, i'm not sure if he's announced if he has completely done fighting or not okay. i think he's still training and everything so i haven't heard uh that he's completely done no okay um but i i, I do hear that he's a fantastic coach he's a great mind oh yeah, oh, yeah. both of those guys i mean they're, they're both very smart at the game chris is a thinker i mean he's very good at jujitsu his ground game is amazing and buckles obviously he's fought in the ufc and he's been through corners, tons of corners, seen, you know, different styles, fought different types of guys. So he's the type of guy that's awesome to have there, you know, coaching because he's so quick-witted. He's so uh, uh, just, I guess, skilled in the in the sport of it so that he knows, you know, I mean, he can pick things up faster than most people can in a corner. Like in between rounds, I mean, you guys have heard his cornering. Like this is, you know, this guy's doing this. You got to do this. Like most, a lot of guys can't do that. A lot of guys come back to the corner and they're like, all right, you're doing great. Keep that up. You know what I mean? So Buckles is the type of guy that can pinpoint things and and find things going wrong or right within a round and tell you that, which is, I think, key as far as a corner and a head coach. Is a part of you deep down happy that it's not going to be TJ and Faber because then this drama would have exploded? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty glad that's not going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been insanity. I, would, I don't know if I could even watch the fight, honestly. Really? That's something I, I really want to see, you know. All right, so you're still cool with TJ? Of course. Yeah, yeah. And then it just would yeah. have brought more uh, more attention and more drama on, on you guys as yeah. well, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, okay, uh, before I let you go, uh, I understand you're going to Utah for, for yep. a different... What's going on there? Uh, we have... Uh, it's, uh, it's a big hunting expo, one of the biggest ones of the year. Um so basically, Pins and Feathers has a booth there. So if anyone's in the area, we'll be there signing autographs. If anyone wants to come take a look at the hunts and maybe book one with me or any of our, our athletes or celebrities, uh, feel free to stop by. It's uh, in Salt Lake City. Okay. And uh, we'll be there Thursday through Sunday. Th and and where, exactly, where can people find more information if they're in the area? Um, you can look us up on finsandfeathers.com. Okay. We have a bunch of info on there. Um, but other than that, it's... Uh, uh, I know that the the Western Hunter and Conservation Expo has a website okay. with all the dates and times and everything, so people can probably just log on to that and check it out. And and finally, before I let you go, uh, when have you started to think about when you would like to return? Has that has that started yeah, to creep into your mind? I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, obviously, I want to take a little bit of time off right now and, and get this business up and running. A um, couple months, and then uh, in, in the meantime, I'm just training, staying sharp, and then we'll get back after it so i mean obviously i don't have like an exact date i don't i gotta talk to the ufc and see uh you know when they're thinking who they're thinking and then we'll kind of game plan it from there what about opponent have you have you thought about that i haven't man okay so that's what i mean we just got to talk to usc and kind of just see what they think what path i'm on where i'm going 
and uh, just go from there. And by the way, what an asshole I am leaving this for the last <laughs> question of the uh, or the last statement or whatever you want to call. It. Mazel tov to you. You got engaged, yeah. right? Yeah. Jesus. I think, yeah, we just I just got engaged. Uh, Abby Rains in uh, Maui this last week. It was so awesome, man. Wow. I saw a picture of you dropping down to one knee. What was is there <laughs> is there a great story there? What did you do? Yeah, I mean, so I had a a group of our closest buddies uh and well, my buddies and then their girlfriends, which are like some of her best friends as well. Um, we planned a trip, and we, we actually hid it from all the girls because we didn't want the girls gossiping and slipping. So it was all the guys that knew about it, but none of the girls. Oh. And so uh, we um, it was on the beach, last, like one of the, the first nights that everybody was there together. Um, we waited till the sunset and basically pulled it onto the beach and got on the knee and asked. We had a bunch of locals there that... Um, we had planned some stuff with the night, a couple nights before, and they uh, had like music all set up for us. We had a uh, like our own private fire dancer that did like a fire dance for us on the beach, and uh, it was a lot of fun, man. She loved it. I loved it. It was cool. Amazing. Well done. Now, uh, when are you getting married? Uh, we don't have a date yet, but probably sometime next year. Okay, I think I'm free. Just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna be there? Uh, well, I mean, it's up to you. Uh, if you want to yeah. send me a save the date, you know, we'll see if I can oh, make yeah. some time. <laughs> uh, Chad, yeah. appreciate the time, man. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Wish you the best. Good luck with the new company. Good luck in Utah this weekend. If you're out there, anyone listening, definitely go check out Chad. I like when you wear the full outfit. I see you with the camouflage. You got the belt on. You got the. You're, oh, you're yeah. a real. You're, you're you're a real man. Like every time I see one of those pictures, <laughs> I feel like such uh, a puny loser. Like, I, <laughs> I just feel like. Come on. Yes. If you ever want to, if you ever want to learn how to do any of them trips, just hit me up. And okay. Like, yeah. Maybe I could be the celebrity. Yeah, I mean, Have I reached? for sure. Okay, fine. I'm sure there's people that would want to come <laughs> on a trip with, with old Ariel. Maybe we could do a fishing trip with you. I'm, I'm afraid, though, that they might turn the gun on me. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's what I mean. We'll, we'll keep okay. it to fishing. Do you do fly fishing? I've always been interested in that. I have a little bit when I was younger, but okay. um, I haven't done it so much as an adult. I'd like to, though. It looks awesome. Yes. We have some awesome spots up here in Northern California, too. I want to wear the, the overalls river. and the boots, yep. the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Danny Castillo even got into that a little bit. Oh. I think he posted a picture of him and all those, that whole gear, the overalls. The I love it. The funny looking hat. Oh, yeah. All right. Fly rod. That was cool. Well, I wish you the best, my man. Thank you for the time, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, Ariel. Good all right. There he you. is. Chad Mendez, always a pleasure to talk to Money Mendez on the program.